Melanie Fournier is with me uh, from, uh, as I said, from Montreal area, 42 years old. I am just so delighted to welcome you to the program, Melanie, and to see you here. And it, you look well, and I'm really happy to see. How are you feeling, number one? It's, it's a hard question to, ask, uh, to answer, honestly. I, I feel right now this is my 11th day, and I feel like I have a really, really bad cold. I'm, I'm very congested. My lungs still hurt. Um, um, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm 100 times better than I was last week uh, at this time. So I'm, I'm counting my blessings. Isn't that great? So it may, hopefully, with fingers crossed, the end is in sight. But as you say, on day 11 of all of this, and we're going to hear your story of being diagnosed and dealing with COVID-19. When you woke up, and if you have to cough, that's okay. I, 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 as you said, your lungs. But you woke up when you became sick with this, as you said, 11 days ago. I understand it was a little scratch in your throat. And then tell us how quickly this illness progressed so I went to bed Thursday night I felt I remember even telling my partner that you know I feel the strongest that I've ever felt in my life and it's hard to believe that you know a healthy person can get this and then the next morning I woke up with a scratch in my throat and uh, within 20 minutes I had a full-blown fever almost at 40 degrees um, my body was shaking I was coughing my lungs hurt I got all those symptoms all at once and it hit me like a ton of bricks and I had no time. I didn't know what to do. I had no time to prepare anything or make arrangements. <coughs> it just, it happened that fast. So what did you do? Did you, did you go to the hospital? Did you, you sought doctor's help? Anything? Uh, so uh, I work for the healthcare system, and so I, in my head, I, I was trying to calm myself down, and I said, okay, I think I know what this is. I, I know the symptoms. Um, we're trained for this, right? So we have all the numbers. We know who to call. We know we know what to do in case of these types of, you know, things happen. And so I called all the numbers that they had given me, and um, it was the most scariest probably the most scariest time of my life because uh, I realized that the numbers that they had given me weren't working. Um, nobody was answering. I was on hold for about an hour uh, before I actually spoke to somebody um, to get a test. And then they wouldn't uh, test me. They said that because I hadn't traveled, they wouldn't test me. So you, you know how badly you're feeling. You know what you're likely dealing yes. with but you don't get the definitive diagnosis. Have you ever had the definitive diagnosis to this to this point? I did, but you know, oh, eventually I, I did. Yes. I, um, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I spoke with the, the man on the phone for a good half hour and I, you know, pretty much told him everything I could to get that test and finally he, he agreed. Um, and then he said, uh, in a, he said he'd send me an email confirmation that somebody would call me within a couple days to get a test. Um, so that initial call from a nurse takes about 48 hours, um, two to three days before they call you to even give you an appointment um, to get tested. So that you're, you're really revealing some of the problems with the whole testing mechanism that so many people have talked about. But let's get right to how you're feeling. That's one part of the story. You're, you're the first person whom I've spoken who, who, has, who is now recovering from, thankfully, COVID-19. What does it feel like, Melanie? I feel, I feel like I dodged a bullet. I feel like, I feel like it could have been me that died. It was so bad. The pain? The pain, the loneliness, the shame, the everything, the not knowing, the not getting answers, the not having anybody to talk to, um, the no doctors available, um, the nurses that I called sometimes gave me wrong information. Um, Sometimes they just, they told me that I didn't have it because they thought it was just a cold. But how can you say that on a telephone call? So all of that, I thought I wasn't going to make it out. And I'm so thankful that I did. There were times it got that right bad that you thought you weren't going to make it through? Yeah. How, tell me about the pain. It's a, it's burning or what does it feel like in your lungs? Um, well, the lung pain, um, it feels sort of like every day I would wake up and I would feel like I have a little bit less capacity to, to inhale. I couldn't, um, you know, I couldn't hold my breath for even three seconds. Um, I couldn't take in as much oxygen as I wanted to. 
um, even just speaking to somebody, like even now I'm still, I'm starting to sweat because I, I feel like I still can't get enough oxygen in my lungs. Um, it's a very scary feeling. And, and the pain is like, it, it was as if um, somebody was stabbing me in the back in my, in my chest area where my lungs are, as if I had about a thousand knives and they're just pressing up against there. And no matter what I did, the pain would just not go away. Like it, it was just there constantly. And was there any treatment offered to you? I mean, there is no cure or treatment that we know of right now. <clears throat> no, I, I was not. I never even seen a doctor, honestly. Still, I've been in isolation. Still, yes. I have been in isolation since they told me to stay home because I was positive. I have not seen a doctor. You said it. You the feel only it. way to stop is if I go to the hospital. Yes. You said something really interesting. You feel shame. How so? Yes. Um, well, not 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 anymore, uh, obviously. But at the beginning, I felt when they called me. Um, first of all, I was the only person that I knew that that contracted this, and um, I felt like I felt like it was a death sentence, and I felt like maybe I had infected somebody else, and that I shouldn't talk about it, or not knowing, like not intentionally. I would never do that intentionally, but. I felt like maybe I did, um, and I had no one to talk to, and I felt like this is something I needed to keep to myself. Well, I'm so glad you're not keeping it to yourself because your message is so strong to the people who are watching. There you are, a beautiful woman of 42, I, I, healthy as can be, and, and very nearly felled or potentially felled by, by this. Uh, and 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 frightened and understandably, you know, we we've been reporting this morning, Melanie, on uh, a survey that was done that talks about Canadians. How about one in eight still think this is overblown? That it's not a big deal? That you know they're not taking it seriously enough, and therefore they're not doing the behavioral things that we've been asked to do. What would your message be to them? My message to them is to take this very very seriously. That this is not a joke. It could happen to anybody. And if you think for one second that you feel so strong and that you have a strong immune system or that you don't even get a common cold, this is not what you think it is. It's not. It, this is real. This is happening. This is killing people. You don't want to get this. If you get this and you need to go to the hospital, you might not make it out. And, and if not for you, think about other people your mom, your grandmother, your the older population, people who have compromised immune systems. Those are the people most vulnerable. Just because you get it doesn't mean it's a death sentence, but it is for other people. It's so important this to hear. Very Day 11, Melanie, and 14 is coming up, and hopefully you'll get those negative tests and get you the all clear and that you'll be, uh, you'll be fine from a physical perspective. But this is obviously going to have a big impact on you for the, for the foreseeable future, or maybe forever. I mean, tell me about how things have changed, your perspective, your thoughts, as a result of this. That's a, that's a great question. Um, I think moving forward, it really, excuse me, it really opened my eyes, um, it opened my eyes to understand how important community is and how important it is to be connected to um, other people, especially when you're suffering um, and when you're sick and alone, because I think the more isolated you are, and this is what this virus does, it really isolates you because one, nobody wants to be around you, and two, there's not a lot of help around and you have to manage your own symptoms by yourself. So it's very isolating, but having people around and having a good sense of community and people who are rooting for you makes the, all the difference. Um, so moving forward, I think I would, and, and that's why, you know, I was very adamant about after, you know, the fifth and sixth day, I was so alone and I was declining. And I said, there has to be other people out there that, that want to talk and, and who are experiencing what I'm experiencing. And I needed to connect to people um, because it is very, very isolating. Well, I can tell you that there'll be people watching. You'll have many more people in your corner as a result of our conversation. And Melanie, I thank you for your courage and your candor. And uh, as I said, that day 14 is in sight. So we wish you continued recovery and, and um, good health. Thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank really you so much. appreciate it.
Melanie Fournier in Montreal.